Good afternoon. My name is Frank Martin Seifert, and uh, I would like to welcome you here this, af uh, this afternoon in co at COP27 for the side event organized uh, by European Space Agencies, JAXA, RESTEC, uh, GFZ, and Gofti Gold uh, on behalf of the Global Forest Observation Initiative on Forest in Africa how satellites support climate action. I hand over to my co-chair. Thank you, Frank Martin. Uh, my name is Mariko Harada from Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. So um, now I'd like to start. Uh, so the, today's uh, session is about the forest in Africa. So uh, forests play a fundamental role in, su in the success of the Paris Agreement. Earth observation satellites provide us the status of the Earth, and the data provides the consistent coverage needed to understand forest cover area and its changes in over large areas. These satellites observing forests are supporting many countries in their decision makings regarding the forest management. Uh, GFOI, uh, one of the flagship of the group on Earth observations, is a cooperation framework to bring uh, the stakeholders, including observation community, research community, and national forestry authorities to realize the sustainable forest management. So today's, uh, in this session, three cases, uh, case studies in moist and dry African forests will highlight how earth observation data are included and enhance national and regional efforts to gain accurate and transparent information on their status and dynamics. So um, I'd like to uh, invite the first speaker, uh, Frank Martin, my colleague, to start his presentation. Frank Martin, the floor is yours. Ne Next one, please. Next. Uh, Sorry, second presentation. Sorry, um, sorry, I skipped my presentation. So um, I'd like to, could you, sorry, could you go back to the slide? So today's uh, session's objective is to discuss how satellites can support climate actions referring to these case studies during the, this side event. So the next slide, please. So today's agenda here uh, um, has uh, two parts. The Global Observation for Africa, we have two speakers. Uh, actually, three speakers, sorry. The systematic observation for space, and the second is to uh, focusing on capacity development and improvements for African forest monitoring. The second part is forests in Africa, so we invite three speakers from each country. Okay, so now, next to you, Frank Martin, the floor is yours. Okay, now we're moving to the second presentation, please. Well, until the presentation is loading, uh, I'm from Martin Seifert, working from the European Space Agency, and we, were, we are implementing uh, for, on behalf of the European Union, the Copernicus Space System, a system which is very suitable as well to observe forestry. Oops, security alert. And I will guide you a bit through the systems uh, which we are bringing up in space, not only from the European side, but as well internationally, and how these uh, are used for global observation. Glitch, yeah, still. Well, let me uh, uh, then just without the slides explain you uh, about 
system of uh, systematic observations. Systematic observations, not only from space, but as well uh, on the ground, are an important input towards the UNFCCC Paris Agreement, towards the global stock take. Uh, the system of the systematic observation community has uh, uh, brought its assets together and uh, were synthesizing their efforts related to uh, the global stock Okay, here we are. No. Okay, next one please, and next. So systematic observation community, you see here uh, not only space agencies, but as well meteorological organizations, research institutions, uh, uh, organizations who are gathering observation data all over the world. Uh, it's just an example. Uh, there are uh, there would be hundreds of uh, organizations to mention here, and we put all we put uh, into a synthesis report towards UNFCCC for the technical assessment uh, um, for the global stock take uh, a, uh, together a synthesis report on how systematic observations can contribute towards the global stock take. That was addressing uh, mitigation, adaptation, uh, as well means of implementation, uh, and cross-cutting issues like loss and damage. Next one, please. Global systematic observations include, include space-based and ground-based observations. From space-based, uh, we have a growing fleet of satellites providing high spatial and temporal resolution and a greater and more frequent coverage of the globe. A good example of this is uh, from the European Union, uh, the Copernicus program with their Sentinel uh, missions, which uh, uh, we are building uh, from out ESA. Ground-based and airborne data provide accurate and esti estimates of weather, climate, air quality, greenhouse gases, forest agriculture, and so on, on local scales, but also worldwide. For climate, we need to bring those sources of systematic observations together to get a panoptic view on the situation of the globe. I will go now towards uh, space systems. Next one. And here uh, I mentioned the Copernicus Sentinels for operational monitoring. Uh, you see a family of six Sentinels uh, where specifically Sentinel-1, a radar uh, uh, system, and Sentinel-2, uh, 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 multi-frequency uh, optical system, uh, are very much uh, suited to observe forests globally. Next. But we are receiving something like 250 terabyte uh, uh, which we are distributing all over the world. Next. In, with a full, free, and open data policy. Sentinel data are for everybody, on uh, every citizen in the world. Other open uh, data sources are uh, from our USGS, the Landsat series. These are the longest time series which we're having, and we're having the opportunity to go back uh, towards uh, 40 years ago, uh, which is important to, uh, to see what are the recent changes in the forest coverage of in our planet. All the other space agencies contribute with open uh, data policy. JAXA has just opened uh, the ALOS 2 uh, archive uh, for uh, in a uh, free and open manner. Next one. 
but we are looking as well at the extension of these missions to strengthen systematic observations uh, in the future. And uh, out of these six uh, satellites which are currently under discussion to be implemented as an uh, expansion missions of Copernicus, uh, I would like to mention specifically CHIME, a hyperspectral mission, and ROSE-L, an L-band SAR mission, which are very relevant related to, uh, uh, to the forest worldwide. All the other space agencies are uh, building up new satellites, more satellites uh, to understand uh, the uh, environment on our planet. Next one, please. Related to forest, not only the forest extent is uh, of interest, but as well the biomass. And here we are, uh, we are in the golden age of biomass missions you see uh, missions to the left side, which are already in orbit from uh, SAOCOM, ALOS, ISA-2, and JEDI, towards missions on the right side, which, uh, which are uh, under development and will be launched within the next uh, uh, two to three years. Next one, please. All these mi missions give a uh, panoptic and better view uh, to uh, assess biomass. Biomass as part of uh, 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 mitigation activities in the agriculture, forestry, and other land use issues, which is the second largest source of emissions globally, and often the primary source in many developing countries. What do you see here? Our efforts related to above ground biomass dens density, where we are trying to harmonize existing maps you, uh, from out uh, ESA related to CCI biomass, NASA on JEDI biomass, and uh, a JPL biomass uh, map uh, to, uh, to break them down to a jurisdictional level to be used in the uh, in the uh, uh, climate policy. But as well, forest, land cover, uh, mangroves for other land use and uh, uh, agriculture are important elements within uh, uh, contributing towards overall air pollution. We're having there more, uh, thanks to the Landsat series, more than 40 years of global land monitoring data sets available. Next one, please. And I'm showing you here uh, a just recently released global 10 meter land cover data set that's from the ESA uh, project World Cover. Uh, it's based on Sentinel 1 and Sentinel 2 data, and as a f uh, and it's a fast generation of the land cover uh, with 11 classes, which you see down uh, uh, at the lower end, and an overall uh, of 75 percent accuracy. That is for a global vision, but it can be used as well on national level as a first indicator of the land cover within countries. Next one, please. And one more on uh, to, uh, to start the video on the lower left side, please. Well, video is not moving, but uh, this is a global land cover. Uh, uh, it's a global map of biomass, and here we see in the middle uh, the Congo Basin as one of the uh, the second largest uh, tropical uh, forest, and uh, uh, referred uh, within the pavillon uh, uh, of the uh, of the Congo Basin as the second uh, as the second lung of. Uh, uh, of our planet. We are uh, having uh, three maps, uh, annual maps of these, and we are currently as, uh, an actual map on 2020 is under validation. Uh, we are uh, improve, improving the consistency between the maps to see as well the changes which are happening over the last decade. And with this, I'm handing over my uh, colleague from JAXA, who will uh, tell you how to uh, bring, uh, to how to relate changes of biomass 
in uh, 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 on-ground tubers observations in the atmosphere. The floor is yours. Oh, thanks, Mark. Uh, next, please. Okay. So uh, here, uh, uh, I would like to introduce the, our Japanese uh, satellite contribution to the detecting the greenhouse gas changes in globe. So uh, JAXA uh, operating the uh, GOSAT and the GOSAT 2 uh, there uh, in orbit, especially for the GOSAT. Uh, GOSAT is uh, uh, 30 years on orbit. And we are providing the, uh, this uh, long-term uh, data in public. Uh, in the uh, user, uh, in other words, the uh, conventional method, uh, the uh, satellite observation can only provide in the uh, total column of the uh, CO2 or methane concentration only. Uh, but uh, newly, uh, our JAXA uh, developing the, uh, the uh, state of art uh, develop, uh, retrieval algorithm to deriving the partial carbon CO2. It means that the near surface CO2 concentration, uh, this uh, new uh, product, the partial carbon product, uh, more informative to uh, identifying the uh, uh, emission or uh, uh, removal near uh, the surface. So uh, the, this product is uh, uh, already uh, freely available. Uh, please visit our website. Uh, in light panel, uh, I'll put in the uh, two figures. The light upper panel showing the uh, total column concentration. It's the uh, conventional product. Oops. The light down, oh, uh, back to the Please, previous one. Back. Please back. Back, please back. Okay, the light down panel shows the new uh, product, uh, lower tropospheric concentration CO2. The comparing these two figures, as you can see, the uh, seasonal amplitude is more clear in new product, uh, it means uh, that uh, uh, our new product uh, highly sensitive to uh, the land surface changes, uh, especially for CO2 and the machine. Uh, next one, please. Uh, regarding the uh, Africa area, especially for the Congo Basin, so uh, we focus in the, the changes in the last decade. So uh, the left one is showing the our two, visualizing two. Uh, it's also uh, accessible from website. So uh, in this two, we can uh, pick up the uh, specified area for uh, we would like to know the CO2 concentration or what CO2 uh, missing. And also the, uh, this data uh, 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 available uh, via uh, website and uh, additional processing can uh, providing the uh, more uh, time, uh, fine, more time finer uh, data set. In this case, I just brought in the uh, Congo Beijing uh, areas uh, changes. The top panel showed the uh, CO2 change. The uh, middle panel showed the uh, solar-induced fluorescence signal. Uh, solar-induced fluorescence signal is the uh, indicator of the photosynthesis of the vegetation or forest. Uh, in the uh, higher signal, the photosynthesis is very active. The down panel shows the uh, near surface water vapor uh, concentration. As you can see, uh, in the uh, wet uh, uh, time, so, uh, time frame, the CO2 is a little bit high. Uh, in, uh, in contrast, the sieve and water vapor is uh, uh, sorry, the sieve is uh, low. And the, uh, in the dry season, the sieve is uh, high, uh, but and also the CO2 is uh, lower. 
So uh, we believe this uh, the time, uh, long term trend data is contributing to supporting the uh, how the change of the uh, forest over uh, vegetation uh, activities. Okay, thanks so much. It's my final presentation. Next one. Well, <coughs> uh, then we are coming to my take home message. Systematic observation underpin climate science and services for mitigation adaptation. Only what you can measure, you can report. Countries can uh, c uh, need this type of information uh, to take action for supported decision making and to raise their national ambitions. We are in a golden age of dedicated missions for forest monitoring and biomass estimation. We see a large variety of sensors uh, uh, from uh, uh, multiple space agencies, multi and hyperspectral optical uh, sensors, LIDARs, uh, uh, stars and different frequencies. They all give together a more complex and uh, complete image of forests globally. It's a basis to increase knowledge on the dynamics of forest and as well for the terrestrial global uh, stock. The mainly open data uh, policies enable as well knowledge exchange to support enhanced transparency framework and the global stock take. Cooperation, and I showed before the biomass map where the cooperation is, be between, uh, is uh, between uh, the Japanese Space Agency, NASA and ESA, uh, is key, but as well not only related to satellite mission, but as well related to in situ data, validation and the accuracy assessment. Overall, long-term systematic observation are means for implementation together. Thanks a lot. And I'm handing now over uh, to Professor Martin Herold, uh, who will, next presentation, next presentation please. who will talk about capacity development and improvement for African forest monitoring. Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you, and also good afternoon from my side. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the Global Forest Observation Initiative in particular, who is one of the mechanisms to try to bring Earth observation data, such as Frank Martin and our colleagues from Japan have shown, uh, into country practice. Uh, and we're going to focus here, of course, on African countries. And I'll first introduce a little bit what the Global Forest Observation Initiative does and, and somewhat how it has improved capacities and then also a bit of an outlook because GFOI really also works on the interface between new technologies and how can be supporting national monitoring and estimation. So first of all, GFOI is a flagship of uh, GEO. Uh, next slide. It is trying to coordinate, it's a coordination mechanism that connects the various players, next slide please, um, uh, connects the various players in uh, capacity development. That includes space agencies, that includes agencies like the UNFAO, Silver Carbon, um, uh, the various partners supporting, including the World, World, World Bank, that based on IPC good practice guidance, uh, is joining forces to see how countries can take up the satellite data. And it's doing that in a systematic way, so there's a family of resources in terms of coordinated capacity development, but also a framework of actually using the right tools at the right place. And with that coordination, and next click please, uh, it tries to serve country needs under what's called a country-led planning process, so countries are in the, uh, in the lead here. Next click. Uh, to serve data and provide data and provide capacities to the various mechanisms that we have on the table when it comes to forest-related mitigation and also increasingly accounting uh, that are being done. Next slide. Um, GFI has four components. One is on methods and guidance. So there's uh, country and user-friendly documentation 
on how to implement the IPC good practice guidelines in national con context. There's focus on coordinated capacity development where the very various capacity building agencies are trying to coordinate their efforts. We have data co coordination that relates to space and in situ data and there's also a research development coordination component. Next slide. I invite you to uh, go to the redcompass.org where you find a lot of the resources that are available at GFOI. So the methods and guidance document is there. It's there in multiple languages. The Red Compass is a tool that helps country to step by step go through a development process uh, on what capacities need to be established uh, for, for example, reporting to the UNFCCC. Uh, so it's not only about the technical aspects, but also how does monitoring link to poli policy de design and so on. There's a registry of tools uh, where people can see uh, what's available in terms of tools, what has been tested and used in countries, and there is uh, the various uh, you know, mechanisms that, for example, FAO is using in terms of the open MR, 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 MRV. So this is an invitation to go check it out. All of these are available. It's quite a rich source. Um, I don't have time to go into this today. Next slide, in terms of um, activities in Africa, there is in the registry of, uh, of activities in GFOI, there's more than 160 support activities delivered to African countries by the various GFOI partners. There's a regional country leads assessment that was uh, started back in 2019. Um, Mozambique was one of the first countries to receive payments and uh, actually the last GFL plenary was before the pandemic, the corona pandemic 2019 was in Maputo and I'm happy to see uh, some of our uh, friends from Mozambique here today including some of our other country partners, GFI country partners who are here on the panel and in the audience. Um, so there's quite a bit of focus on um, Africa because so where we are aware that uh, the uptake of monitoring capacities or the initial gaps to actually filled in Africa were initially very high. But if you look at the next slide, next slide please then, um, we made an assessment on how capacities have actually improved in Africa and our, in fact globally on national force monitoring. Next slide please. Um, and what I want you to focus on, it's focus on the green, the green uh, maps. The green maps show where countries have improved their national capacities when reporting to the FAO forest resources assessment when it comes to the use of remote sensing, that's on the left green map, and when it comes to the improvements on national forest inventories. And you see there's a lot of green in Africa, which means there has been a lot of progress made in first of all taking and using satellite data to reporting forest area and forest area change. And there has been a lot of progress made in starting and establishing NFI, so National Forest Inventory Efforts, in support of uh, Red, Red Plus. And that's good news. And that's, I think, an important development because it shows that the efforts by countries, the efforts by countries together with international partners and supporting progr programs have really resulted in improved capacities. And uh, it also shows that even things like Earth observation data, which seems like, a, let's say, a high-tech kind of uh, high-tech kind of systems, they can land in the hands of countries to be used for their, for their reporting. Um, of course, the challenge or the key issue for the future is how can we sustain that progress? There are still gaps to be filled, for example, when it comes to monitoring forest degradation, when it comes to monitoring forest regrowth and enhancements. And we also see an increasing need to use this data not only for national greenhouse gas reporting, but also to support policy and climate action in forests. And that is where I would like to highlight in the next two slides a bit what's also happening a bit in the research domain. It was already kind of uh, hinted to that we see an increasing profileration of space-based estimation of biomass and biomass dynamics. Next slide, please. And there are prototype studies ongoing as part of, for example, uh, project in the UK and by the European Space Agency to look at trends in African forest biomass over a period of, uh, of uh, more than 10 years. And at least from this scientific study, it is actually hinted that in, in, in terms of net flux, so in terms of net biomass change, African sources are turning from what used to be a sink uh, in the early 2010s towards the source towards the end of that. And that's at least evidence from that, but it shows that we increasingly get to the point where we can track biomass dynamics also using a combination of space-based and on-the-ground data. 
This is a research study, but as we have seen that the uptake of Earth observation data in countries can be possible, the next step, for example, in the context of GFOI would be to see how these data can also support countries integrate with their national forest inventory efforts, uh, for example. And then another uh, study, next slide, is showing, again, this is a scientific study, on how we can actually do carbon, local carbon loss estimations in African forest much rapidly. So this uses near real time satellite data that are available on the weekly uh, scale. These are based on European Sentinel-1 data, combined with biomass maps, and get a very rapid assessment on local carbon losses linked to forest disturbances. The point that I'd like to make here, so we, get, we can get towards estimates of local carbon losses on a monthly scale. Again, it's a research study, but we can, with that kind of tool, start to overcome the timeliness or the, let's say, the time lag that we have in many greenhouse gas estimation efforts, not only in Africa, but also in many countries which take three, four, five years, even in Europe, to report on a greenhouse gas ag accuracy number. And we think about the global stock take, the target 2023, that we are based on data that are usually four, four to five years old. We're not, we're not reporting where we actually stand. So the point here is improving the speed of estimation and the timeliness of delivery of estimation is really also an important area to be seen to developing in the future. And then last slide, these are efforts that we'll be tackling. Next slide. Uh, also as part of GFOI, so if you're interested in Engage, um, there are several ways to do that. The next GFOI plenary is planned for May next year. It be hosted at the FAO premises, at the FAO headquarters in Rome. We're also starting to plan some GFOI expert meeting, particularly with the context of biomass estimation. So if you have an interest, come and con co contact us and join. Thank you very much, and back to the moderator. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to invite next speaker, uh, Mr. Jorgen Makwakwa from uh, National Directorate for Forestry in Mozambique. Makwakwa, Mr. Makwakwa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, ESA for inviting me to uh, do my presentation about Mozambique uh, regarding the National Forest Monitoring System to support the uh, greenhouse gas reporting. Next, please. So this is the outline. Next. So the objective of uh, the National Forest Inventory is to guide, to ensure the uh, generation of the information in a robust and uh, transparent way in order to support the global change. So here we have to see that, okay, the issue around this is the deforestation areas uh, uh, detected uh, by uh, existing uh, warning system. Uh, so here, uh, there are some requirements that we have to follow in, uh, on this in order to respond to the National Forest Monitoring System uh, according to the paragraph 17, decision 1 CP 16. And then for that, we need uh, to have a national uh, forest monitoring system in order to uh, get eligible result-based payment. So that's why we think that, okay, we need to strengthen the technology in order to control the deforestation in the country. And then we developed a uh, reference system to monitor the, uh, the, the deforestation, uh, supported by uh, uh, JAXA and JICA. Uh, starting this year, and then all of these we need to feed up the greenhouse gas reporting uh, at, at the UNFCCC. Next, please. Next. So the methodology used, actually, we started by using the wall to wall methodology, uh, where we use the NDVI uh, tree uh, cover forest uh, of forest and non-forest. And then, but there we have to follow certain steps, like a number of verification points, verification methodologies, and looking into the accuracy, and then also we have to uh, see the issue of the arbitrariness and the geographical bias, bias that we have to uh, make sure that, okay, a verification is being carried out, and then we have to do uh, accuracy uh, target, where it, it uh, gave us 95% of the result in order to produce the forest cover and the forest cover change map. But also, we've been piloting an exercise to analyze the annual change information uh, of the 
uh, forest cover uh, due to the charcoal production, following also the methodology of calculating the NDVI and the differences. Next, please. So, the output that we have uh, by using the methodology that I've been explaining there, actually it gave us uh, 38 million hectares uh, covered by forest, which would represent 48% of the country. But the, as we uh, know, uh, our deforestation rate, it runs about 220,000 uh, hectares per year. So here is where we, we saw that, okay, at uh, national forest uh, reference level, uh, a best map is needed in order to see how much it changed. For that, we, we used uh, Landsat 8 data, and then we used the ALOS data the radar in, in information, so you, using the wall to wall methodology. And then uh, after that, we use the collect earth to uh, estim estimate the activity data in the country. And then that tool, it allowed us to uh, produce the uh, reference emission level for the country, which we submitted the UNCCC in 2018. And then uh, we also, we did our national forest inventory, and then we update our national deforestation estimation for degradation. And then we produced historical data also, but just for two uh, provinces to see how accurate this information of uh, reference level is. And then we, uh, uh, we are running now the provincial zoning of uh, Niasa province using Sentinel-2 data, and also we are developing an integrated forest management methodology for a national uh, wide system. So here also we did forget the issue of a fire, uh, what fire uh, data map, because it's one of the issues that is needed to uh, report the emissions. And then uh, we uh, we've been supported uh, by CFRN also to produce an annual land use and land cover uh, map uh, using uh, the uh, classification of the satellite image time series from 1992 to 2019. It was a pilot using the technology developed by the Brazilian data cube uh, projection. Next, please. So this is the information that we had it as a result. So uh, at the left side, you can see our forest uh, reference-based map uh, of 2013, but at the right side, you can see uh, the changes in terms of deforestation. We just picked uh, only a few things uh, from uh, 2017 uh, to 20, uh, 2020. So as you can see, uh, from yellow to red, those are the results of the forest change that we had. If you see at the middle, uh, the major activity that it caused those change is the uh, shifting cultivation followed by the settlement. Next, please. So, how can we get there? So, we do the NDVI uh, difference classes, vegetation uh, intensity, where uh, from this data, for example, this is a uh, Sentinel-2 data that we got, and then uh, where from one to uh, the less value, it shows uh, how this intensity, it varies. Next, please. So, uh, after uh, doing the intensity of the vegetation, we have to do a kind of a reclassification where we define uh, the closed forest, open forest, uh, and other type of forest that, okay, our, it belongs to our forest classification in order to uh, go to the field uh, to check and validate this information. Next, please. So we do also another uh, activities uh, of the mangrove mapping uh, here where we use the Landsat uh, ETM information, and also we use some uh, error photography. Uh, luckily, we do have some uh, uh, error photography along the coast where we map our uh, mangrove uh, areas, and then we do the field validation and the different classes of the mangrove, as you can see in the bottom. Uh, next, please. So, all of these activities, they are hosted in a platform that we call Forest Resource Information Platform. But also, additionally, we had to do a satellite-based deforestation reference system. So you can find it at the link above there. So this is the main page of our uh, forest resource information platform where you can enter 
uh, and then you find all the data related to the forest monitoring system, and then also the information that I've been showing you about the uh, deforestation, you can find on the SDRS, where you find basically the uh, some real time information regarding the deforestation. Next, please. So this information uh, about the deforestation is still a tricky for us because we used to compare this information from the uh, JJ Fast, the GLAD, uh, the information produced with the FNDS and the Hansen data, uh, and also the fire models information. Next, please. Next. So the challenge is information regarding the resolution of each uh, uh, satellite data that we have here. As you can see at the middle, the information uh, of uh, 50 uh, uh, meters resolution, 30, 20, and so on. And then this information, it gives information like, uh, next slide, please. You can see here, at the, this slide here, where we try to compare this information. We have information that, okay, we have from the GJ Fast, but when we bring together the information from GJ Fast, GLAD, ALET, and information from uh, FNDS, which is our uh, sector in Mozambique and the information of Hansen, you can have full of information on the right side, and then that is the problem of the different resolution that we're having. Next, please. So, uh, coming back to our system, you can enter in a dashboard where you can uh, see the detail of this information. What does it mean in terms of the polygons and uh, what area it has, and then you can see the bite chart of this information inside of the system. Next, please. So, we try to compare here the GGFAST information and uh, the, the Sentinel-2 information. Th we saw that, okay, this information are a little bit close to each other, where we can detect information at the same real time, and then at the threshold, for us, it was not so different on this information. And also, it provides you all the data uh, that it can help, especially uh, our uh, forest sector to monitor the forest. Next, please. So. This is a, uh, how can we use this information? This information, it can help us to use our sector. Uh, I'm talking about the agriculture, I'm talking about the environmental quality control, and also the forest ranges in order to see where deforestation is being uh, 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 carried out, and then they can try to apply what our forest law it, uh, states. Next, please. So, but besides that, uh, we started to uh, have a kind of cooperation with other uh, producers of this information, uh, especially ACFA. So where uh, they did a, a, a kind of a piloting in a three area in Mozambique, and they're using also the same technology that we're using. Next, please. Uh, where here, they also, they found some challenges in terms of a, a comparison of the forest type. When we look at the, Miyombo Forest and Mopane Forest, uh, and then we try to find out the issue of the closed forest and versus open forest. So this is still a little bit of challenge uh, using the classification in order to uh, improve the threshold or, uh, of the interpretation of this uh, type of forest. So uh, these challenges still uh, need to be fixed out in order to bring much more accuracy. Next, please. So this is one example where we use uh, information that, okay, when the uh, information, it's a, uh, it comes from the closed uh, the canopy to the uh, non-open uh, uh, forestry. So here we can easily see that, okay, from the height of uh, 10 meters for the accuracy, it's approximately 87%. Uh, and then, so uh, we can ensure that, okay, so there are something, the other thing that influence uh, from the small scale, like uh, agriculture harvesting timber and the harvesting of the non-product, it can be counted uh, for the uh, scale of 10 meters. Next, please. So, here is where uh, the three uh, cover density uh, needs to be checked, where we find, according to the definition of our forest, where, uh, when it's uh, the hectare, it's, the area is uh, one meters to the coverage of 30%. And then you can find all of this uh, information when we start to map based on 
uh, our definition of the forest. Next, please. So, uh, what I've been explaining, you can easily see here in this map here, where you have uh, forested area and non-forested area. So, this is basically uh, from our forest definition. As you can see there, the tree uh, cover and the density. Next, please. So, as I said, we have challenges. So, the high resolution standard data, it needs uh, to be a practice for us in order to uh, rely on what data should we uh, report when it comes in the forest monitoring, especially when we want to feed up the greenhouse gas inventory. And also there are difficulties uh, on the comparison of the historical data. If you want to use different satellite data, so you have tried to have one satellite data that it can easily compare the data. And then so, uh, we need uh, uh, to do a hard work in order to fulfill the schedule uh, behind uh, 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 the speed of our uh, internet, because most of the information that we have, it depends on the uh, internet uh, uh, speed to download information, like a satellite data. And then also we do face the hardware and software acquisition, because it needs to be updated from time to time. And then also the lack of human resource uh, in GIS and remote sensing and this financial support. So in order to have a kind of a, a systematic provision of data to uh, feed up the greenhouse gas inventory, uh, to report the issue like a BOR or BTR and the annex of Red Plus and uh, other information regarding the emission. So next, please. Having said this, next, please. Having said this, this, the request that we as a country we have is the need of support on the challenges uh, I've mentioned in the previous slide. So next, please. Having said this, I'd like to say thank you for my presentation. But don't forget that, okay, uh, measure the earth are they beyond Please. Thank you. Thank you, Joachim. Uh, now uh, we have announced uh, uh, a presentation of the Republic of Congo, but due to uh, 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 other commitments, Karin uh, Milando cannot make the presentation and I'm uh, glad that uh, Natalia Nana, a climate technical advisor to the Congo Basin from the US Forest Service will tell us about challenges in the Congo Basin. Tatiana, the floor is yours. Thank you, Frank, for giving me the floor. Uh, I am privileged to talk on behalf of the US Forest Service today. Uh, my apology because I did not uh, prepare slides. I just have a short talk on uh, the support uh, of the Silver Carbon Program in the Congo Basin. Silver Carbon Program is um, a technical pro cooperation program of the U.S. Forest Service to enhance uh, the capacity of uh, some selected countries uh, in the tropical area uh, to measure, monitor, and report um, on their forest carbon and other lands carbon. Uh, this program provides um, targeted uh, support to countries um, in their process of developing their forest monitoring systems to support the management and decisions. Um, among the activities I can quote today, um, some activities carried out in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the Republic of Congo and Cameroon, uh, related to the assessment of um, the national forest monitoring systems to identify the strengths and uh, the gaps in their systems uh, so that we can uh, know how to effect efficiently support those countries. Besides, um, we also, um, I would say, according to uh, our approach, our capacity building approach uh, through different trainings, um, we support the production of activity data in those countries uh, using Red Canvas and uh, guidelines, which is a GFOI tool. Um, as an example, I can cite um, 
land use mapping activity in the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, with the support of the University of Maryland. Uh, the same activity was carried out in Republic of Congo and Cameroon, um, including the biomass burning mapping and uh, uh, in, a sh in progress, uh, the uh, mapping of uh, degra uh, degradation, forest degradation areas. This was done with the partnership of uh, FAO, uh, Coalition for Rainforest Nation, and um, Special Information Group, SIG. Um, we also uh, supported the mapping of um, uh, land use uh, using radar images to, um, to, to fill the gaps uh, uh, with the issue of um, cloud, cloudy areas in uh, the Congo Basin. Moreover, uh, I can talk about our support in uh, reviewing the development of uh, the reference uh, levels in uh, uh, the DRC um, uh, emission uh, program, emission reduction program, uh, Mindombe, and uh, in Sangwa Likwala emission reduction program in, Repo in the Republic of Congo. Um, this enabled, for example, in DRC to access uh, the result based payment. Um, one of our program uh, which we are very proud of is the WICA program. WICA stands for the Central Africa Women Initiative for Climate Action. Uh, based on the observation made in, the, in Central Africa uh, sub-region, which is the lack of uh, expertise in MRV and GSG accounting, especially women expertise and participation in climate uh, processes. Uh, Silver Carbon initiated uh, this WICA program uh, that was designed to strengthen the capacity and increase the participation of uh, students of the university and early career women uh, in Central Africa uh, climate action processes. This was carried out in five countries, Cameroon, uh, Gabon, um, Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo, and recently the Central Africa uh, Republic. Uh, I will not, uh, I cannot conclude my talk without mentioning some related activities that uh, do not fall under the banner of silver carbon, but uh, they fall uh, under the banner of CARPE program and the SWAM program of the U.S. Forest Service. Um, this program are the peatland, uh, the SWAM program, which is uh, um, a program on capacity building in mapping peatlands, and also the assessment of state of knowledge uh, in this um, field. Uh, I will conclude by talking about also the development of the Red Plus uh, registry in DRC. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to invite next speaker, uh, Faith Maswari from uh, Kenya Forest Service. Faith, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to talk about the Kenya's um, National Forest Monitoring System in Kenya. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the presentation outline on what I'm going to do the presentation. Next slide. Uh, I would like to start by talking about Kenya, where Kenya is. Uh, those may not be knowing the location of Kenya. It's in East Africa, located in the borders of Southern Sudan, Ethiopia in the north, Somalia in the east, and Indian Ocean in the south coast, and Tanzania in the south, and Uganda in the west. Uh, it's also good to know that the country has a total area of 592,000 square kilometers, including 13,400 square kilometers inland water, and a coastline of 536 kilometers. Next, please. 
And also as part of introduction, just an overview of the Red Plus activities listed in the uh, As Cancun agreements. Um, Kenya has uh, reported on reducing emissions from deforestation, degradation, sustainable management of forests, uh, enhancement of carbon forest stocks, but not on the conservation of forest carbon stocks. Now on the Red Plus requirements, just an overview, the four Red Plus requirements, which are the forest reference uh, level, uh, national strategy, NFMS, and safeguards. I'll be talking about their status shortly. Next, please. The National Red Plus Strategy uh, has been completed, as you see, in December 2021, which includes a safeguard information system for the country as well. And this has been completed and written under the um, support of UNDP and also financed by the FCPF. Next, please. Uh, moving to the forest reference level, I want to talk about a few activities here. Uh, the national forest level also has been submitted, uh, which was constructed in partnership of JICA and was already submitted to the UNFCCC in January 2021. Now, there are several decisions that the country made. One of them was the forest decision, which is, uh, talks about the minimum of 15% canopy cover and a minimum land area of 0 0.5 hectares and a minimum tree height of two meters. Uh, the scale that the country has decided to use is a national scale, which means the entire country. And the activities, as I earlier talked about, there are four of them, except the conservation activity that has only been taken on board. Uh, the greenhouse gases inventory reported just the carbon dioxide for the country. Uh, the forest also, the country has reported about four, uh, the four stratas, stratas, which is the mountain forest, coastal and mangrove, dryland forests, and public plantations. Uh, note that the private plantations have not been included in this reporting. Uh, the carbon pools, the country has written only on the above ground biomass and the below ground biomass. Uh, the reference period is 2002 to 2018. Uh, at an interval out of four years, that is 2002 to 2006, 2010, 14, and 2018. Um, a, historical, a historical average of emission removals between 2002 has been done, and as, as I've said, it has been monitored at an interval of four years. Next, please. Now, moving to the National Forest Monitoring System in this presentation, therefore, uh, it's expected that the National Forest Monitoring System has both the monitoring function and the MRV function, uh, which contains the remote sensing or the monitoring, the web-based interface, the community monitoring, and other monitoring systems. While on the other hand, we have the satellite land monitoring system and the National Forest Inventory, Greenhouse Gas Inventory. However, the basic consideration for the Kenya's NFMS, therefore, has just been the same as the ones on the FRL, and uh, the land categorization, which I never mentioned earlier, we have done a reference to the six IPCC classes, but Kenya has modified to 10 classes. Uh, for example, we have the forest, instead of the forest land, then we have three classes of forest. Uh, the dense, moderate, and the open forest. For the cropland, we have the two cropland, the uh, annual cropland, and uh, perennial cropland. And ETC for the other classes also have been uh, categorized as such. Now, the forest definition I earlier talked about, and also the stratification, the pools, and the gases as well. Next slide, please. Uh, Kenya already has started the development of an NFMS, and uh, the conceptual design of our NFMS is uh, as indicated in the diagram there. So we have the data management function, uh, and at the middle, we have the forest information platform, while below we have the monitoring function. So the design already has been done, also under support from JICA. However, not every part of this detail has been populated with information. It's still in construction, not still complete, but however, this design already is there. Next, please. Now, the components of the FIP, that's the middle part of our NFMS, have uh, the FRLs, the MRV, the safeguards, the forest cover change monitoring, uh, the Red Plus strategy, 
forest sector and safety information, other relevant data, and the Red Plus uh, CDM projects and other projects. Now, for the FRLs there, uh, because already we have the FRL, in our forest, uh, NFMS already contains the FRL documents uploaded in the NFMS, as well as the forest cover change maps and the change maps that we have already done. Next, please. Uh, the monitoring uh, function, again, of the NFMS, we have uh, done the activity data which has been uploaded. These are the forest cover area and cover change maps for the country. The national is the water wall maps that have been done. Uh, the emission factors, we have the foreign carbon stock, the EF. Now, it's good to note that uh, our emission factors was developed from a uh, pilot data that has been collected and also the use of the IPCC default values. This is the reason because that because we don't have a national forest inventory uh, done for the country. Now for the forest cover change monitoring, we are using, I'll talk about this, the JJ FAST, the use of values tool to monitor deforestation and also a system called the near real-time forest alert system to monitor the forest disturbances. Uh, others are forest emissions. This is not yet uh, done, not uploaded yet in the, our NFMS. These are the pending things that need to be uploaded in the NFMS or to be constructed. Biodiversity and then the project registration for the different projects that were within the country. Next, please. Now, for the activity data, as I said, the forest cover maps from 2002 to 2018, these are the maps that were previously learned for the country. Uh, the data that has been used for this uh, mapping is a purely Landsat data. However, the country, Kenya, has a problem of the uh, cloud cover, especially at the coastal region, and therefore, we had some missing data in the coastal region for the cloud cover. Though we used a, a process called the CPN to be able to cover up that, but still looking for the ways in which we can prove this data for future, and also as we improve our FRL. Next, please. Next. Uh, for the monitoring of deforestation, we are using the JJ FAST, the JAXA Forest Early Warning System in the tropics, to be able to get this data for the deforestation. Next, please. Next, please. Now, for this is a, an interface for our National Forest Monitoring System where this information on JJ FAST has been uploaded. And uh, if you look at that specific area, it's the most central part of uh, the country where it's high potential and where most of our forests lie because uh, most of, like 70% of our country is dry land. And this is the most potential area. So if you look at this, we already uploaded the JJ FAST information here, whereby we are able to check what area is being deforested at some uh, points, and then use this information to check the causes of the deforestation. Next, please. The next uh, slide is the near real-time forest alert system, which uses uh, the sentinel uh, image to be able to create the forest alerts. These are the disturbances, whether it is a positive or the negative change. And uh, we use uh, the survey one, two, three tool to do for data collection and uh, reporting. Now, this dashboard also is in the, our national forest monitoring system that where we use the citizen science and the, our people on the ground, uh, the communities and also our rangers on the ground, pick this information by the use of their mobile phones and send it and it's automatically uploaded in the system. It's just on pilot uh, data, which is just at the coastal region for this. And this is the kind of information that we are able to receive, meaning that you can be able to see what is the type of the incidents that has been occurring. Uh, what are the sources of these alerts? In which forest type then are we uh, disturbing as much? And also the officer is able to take photographs of the same that he has collected to upload as you see on your left. And also we are able to say who, which is the reporting officer, has been able to send this information just in case that you'd want the follow-up. If this, you can be able to get uh, your reports in terms of graphs or PDF reports for reporting. Next, please. Now, um, in addition to that, because already we have submitted the FRL and uh, the NFMS already under construction, uh, IMPRESS, the improving measurements for payments and to
to reduce emissions and strengthen things. That's the impress project that is supported by the UK Pact uh, through FAO. Um, it's a project that is supporting the Kenya Forest Service or the government to be able to improve the emission estimates. And in this, they are looking at the high integrity forest data that meet enhanced technical requirements for the new carbon standards. So therefore, look at what, we are, what is required for the, uh, for the carbon standards and then try to improve the activity data to be able to meet this. And also to help us to have open up access for the carbon finance and the climate change mitigation and sustainable development objectives. So the objective of this project, it's currently ongoing, is to generate high quality activity data for deforestation, forest degradation, and forest restoration. And also to produce better information on wetlands, especially the mangroves, which lie along the coast. And I've said that you have uh, issues of uh, data, especially the satellite data along the coast due to the cloud cover. Also aggregate emission trends and carbon finance opportunities uh, leverage improved data and better policy planning and implementation, and also give uh, some or check some lessons learned from other countries and South South Exchange. Next, please. Um, this I call them things to do, but they're things that we need to look at as a country and to know that Kenya has relied on pilot data and the IPCC default values to be able to calculate the emission factors. Therefore, we are saying the country needs a uh, national forest inventory to support improved emission factors. Uh, Kenya needs really support on this uh, because this is, not, this is what we have not been able to do, but we would also like to improve our emission factors that we're using for the, uh, for the reporting. Um, the next we need also want to upscale the, the near real time forest alert system. As I've said, it's only on pilots along the coast and we would want that the whole country is able to report using this near real time alerts to report the forest disturbances everywhere. That's at a national level. Um, number three is that previously, as I talked about the, our maps that you have used, we have utilized the Landsat maps that are really freely available and also have historical data to establish the FRL. And, but currently we need to respond to the new demand to access the carbon uh, markets. There are new conditions that are coming so that you're able to access the carbon market. For example, leases for years, five years, that's what we need. And therefore, uh, the government needs to revise its FRL to be able to meet this request. Therefore, because we have JAXA here, we have European Space Agency here, we need this uh, accurate data, timely data, which of most of them are not really freely available, but if made free or easily accessible, for example, radar for the, our coastal region, or other high resolution to be able to do this mapping, then therefore this would really support the country. Also there are emerging needs to access and to monitor tree cover. The country has only now for the first time mapped uh, the tree cover for the country because basically we have doing the forest cover and not the tree cover. And uh, because the constitution of Kenya also requires the country to attain a 10 uh, percent tree cover. Therefore, we need to assess this uh, tree cover and see where are we. Already we have done the first one, the first tree cover assessment in 2021. And uh, we are, again, uh, required to do this on a timely basis. This is around five years. And to do the same assessment of the tree cover. Even recently, uh, there's a demand, there's, um, we have been asked to increase our forest cover, or that is what the country has committed to increase the tree cover by 30 percent uh, to 30 percent by the year 2032. To be able to assess this then, there's a need to be able to monitor our tree cover, whether we are really achieving what we want to achieve. And therefore need uh, for data, the high resolution data, because the previous done that we have done is a high resolution data, also support for the high resolution data to be able to do this tree cover mapping. Next, please. And I say thank you with our beautiful coastal region there. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you for all the speakers for the wonderful and uh, uh, very informative presentation. 
Now I like to move on to the uh, panel discussion with all the speakers. So um, uh, if uh, the for I like to open the floor for any questions to speakers. Please raise your hands and introduce yourself uh, shortly. Okay, uh, over to the lady uh, on the second line. Uh, please wait for the mic to be there. Hi, thank you all for your presentations. I'm, my name is Tyler. I'm a second year Master's of Environmental Science student at Yale University in the United States. Um, I'm interested in urbanization. My, my research in my lab focuses heavily on urbanization and we study that using remote sensing and one of the biggest challenges is um, how to identify vegetation, particularly tree cover, in urban areas because many of the data sets you talked about are 10 meter resolution which is fantastic, but even that level of high resolution might not be enough to pick up on street trees or you know this vegetation that's really important in combating climate change, but it's not a forest in the traditional sense. And so I'm wondering how you all would approach monitoring forest cover um, and vegetation in an urban context and in more broadly, how you might use remote sensing to improve on sustainable urbanization. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, I think it's the on the 10 meter level, uh, which is now based on, for example, the European Sentinel data. Uh, there is limitation detecting all trees, uh, even in a in a landscape like uh, African woodland and stuff like that. Some of the small trees you're missing, and I think it's good to acknowledge that. Um, Frank Martin presented the World Cover uh, 2020. There's now World Cover 2021 just released which is kind of a tree cover, so that's, I think, the best available at the moment when it comes to 10 meter global tree cover, including in urban area, areas, but then acknowledging the limitations. Um, there is also a world of higher resolution uh, remote sensing or observation out there. It's mostly on the commercial side, uh, the commercial data providers, which uh, you know, are available and are used also by countries. For example, uh, a lot of the sampling um, uh, sample interpretation that's done for stratified area estimation for reference level work and something like that is based on high resolution, uh, higher resolution data. Uh, the, Euro the Norwegian government has provided uh, free and open planet labs data, which I think is in the order of 4.77 meter resolution, free and open for the pantropics for forest monitoring purposes. So that's the source that is available also source, I think their motivation was really to um, support a much more transparent forest sector monitoring also at higher resolu resolution. Um, and then of course there is perhaps, besides the commercial side, maybe also a future in the public domain that might go to higher resolution than what we have at the moment, but that's not available at the moment. So, but there is a commercial market out there, and most services, and there's quite a choice of satellites if you want to get more details. And just on the urban side, I think it's an important point. Uh, and of course, here we're talking mostly about red plus and mitigation, but for, particularly when you think about, for example, climate change m adaptation. Uh, trees in urban areas play a very important role. And I think sometimes in all of these debates, we look looking also there's a forest monitoring for adaptation field out there that I think also needs to receive more attention. After Martin, I would like to add something. The US Forest Survey developed uh, a software to uh, um, monitoring uh, urban trees. The software is called iTree. If you go online and you just uh, type iTree, you will have all the information on this software and you have all the methodologies. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'm Farhan Zigu from, uh, from Gabon, from um, Gabonese Spatial Agency. And uh, I have two questions. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for your presentation. It was very interesting. Uh, 
My first question is uh, it's about uh, clouds. At Gabon, we have a, a problem of constant clouds over almost all years around. Uh, and for optical satellites, uh, uh, this pose a problem for um, forest monitoring. Actually, we are going to develop a, a monitoring forest system. But um, with clouds, there is some difficulty. Um, we also use uh, uh, um, to for this problem. We uh, s sorry, uh, just yes. Uh, sorry, I, I I read my question. Just to be sure to 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 say it well. Mm. There is a, a, um, a logging uh, to to watch out for. Uh, we do this, but with some difficulty because uh, we we use cloudless mosaic uh, uh, for different dates. Uh, we also use radar images, uh, but with radar uh, there can be um, uh, saturation and. Um, as the signal uh, is structural, we do not have all the discrimination of the 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 the, the land uh, the land cover. Uh, have you ever uh, thought of uh, a way to provide optical radar fusion uh, data, uh, uh, um, a ra uh, optical radar um, and um, uh, optical and radar fusion data? or we could enjoy the benefits uh, of both. Uh, my second question is for uh, JAXA. I, uh, I, see, I, see, I saw uh, Kenya uh, monitor forest changes using ALOS2 data. Uh, I just want to know um, because we had used ALOS1 to uh, characterize and monitor mangroves uh, uh, forest at Gabon. Uh, and now we're going to update the, those data with a lot of two, but uh, there is some cost issue, you know. Uh, just want to know if um, you have a specific partner or uh, if for us, uh, there is a, a specific program allowed to encourage the, um, this work, uh, uh, especially linked to uh, uh, um, uh, climate uh, issue for the of the moment. Thank you very much. Well, uh, related to uh, the very uh, almost permanent cloud coverage in Gabon, uh, you already mentioned ra uh, that you're using radar. Uh, may I ask which radar sensor are you using? Yes, we, we're using radar data. Um, and um, where we, we have some, some changes, uh, and um, uh, the, you know, just for some specific case uh, like agriculture or um, um, some other uh, activities that cut all the, the, the forest, we just, uh, we can uh, very uh, see well the, the patch of the, um, the, the, the changes with uh, yeah. radar data. But where we want to monitor the um, logging, some roads uh, and uh, patch of um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, of logging uh, don't really good appears on the image. Uh, it's the um, it's just the, the the problem that we have radar data, but mm. we use radar data. Well, you will have always uh, uh, some uh, uh, some logging activities which uh, will not be detected by the current system. Uh, uh, to this extent, I could uh, point you as well to uh, my colleague Joachim, uh, 
uh, they were looking specifically at uh, uh, near real uh, time uh, disturbances uh, to detect logging areas. Uh, Martin uh, was showing the RAT system, uh, which uh, is specifically developed within uh, moist uh, tropical forest. Uh, and uh, from out uh, uh, JAXA, there's a JJ FAST uh, based on ALOS. Uh, uh, so you have already some radar systems. And bringing those together, we would like then to learn from you uh, what are still the missing things uh, which we should improve further. So I much. really uh, would like to continue this dialogue uh, after this side event. For sure, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for the, your question and comments. Yeah, from uh, Jack's uh, perspective, maybe uh, Osamu, <laughs> you have your, maybe you, you have your comments. Just a short, actually, I'm from the JAXA, actually, that, uh, yes, we developed the JJ first, actually, that might be useful, but it depends on just the US colleagues mentioned about how much size or resolution you might look into this for the logging. Because JJ first is um, like a three, uh, less than three hectare, it might not be possible to detect the changes. So that is depends on what, how much area you would like to see about for detection for the changes. So maybe we can talk offline. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, as uh, Frank Martin said, we like to learn from you what you experience and what you're facing for the challenge. So uh, let's uh, discuss, uh, continue for discussing. Thank you. Um, and I, is there any other question, comments from the floor? Nope. Do you have well, then I would have a question to. Uh, oh, there was. Okay, uh, there I s see two comments, two hands. Okay. Yes. So. Um, my name is Clément Alberger. I am with the European Space Agency Climate Office. And first, I'd like to thank you all for your for the great presentation. Uh, I have a very uh, a practical one for for you, Faith. You you presented the work that has been done in uh, in Kenya. I will not ask anything from the Earth observation uh, side, but all the work you are doing on the ground, all those survey and all those information on forest uh, degradation, forest uh, regrowth, is that the data set that can be uh, made available for, for example, for, for a team of scientists that would like to look at uh, greenhouse gas uh, emission from, uh, from forested area? Yes, that would be useful for us, especially if we do the provision of data, yes. And uh, maybe we can have a discussion and see how we do it best. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Samir Fresta. I'm from the University of Bayreuth. Uh, so uh, my, my question, I, I thank you all for all of your presentations on this wonderful applications of remote sensing. So my question is to the uh, J Japanese uh, representative where uh, with this about the satellite GoSat, and uh, you mentioned that there were some uh, new methods using uh, both the uh, uh, thermal and the uh, uh, other, well, sorry, uh, both the thermal and the solar reflected uh, uh, bands. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, could you expand on what type of new method it was, and uh, what uh, whether what kind of fluorescent fluorescence you explained, I think, a little bit, but uh, yeah, just more details on that. Thank you. Thanks for your question. Yeah. Uh, usually, uh, the conventional satellite measurement, just uh, observing the short wave infrared, it means that the 1.6 micron to uh, 2.0 or uh, 2.5 micron. It's uh, just related with uh, the solar reflected light. The solar reflected light means that uh, uh, the reflected from the Earth's surface. Uh, it's a conventional technique, uh, just using this uh, short wave. In our uh, new algorithm, uh, new GOSAT uh, technology, 
we are combining the not only the short wave uh, IR, but also the th thermal infrared. Thermal infrared uh, is uh, emission from the atmosphere. Then that has uh, information for the uh, some uh, atmospheric layers. So uh, the total column is just deriving with the short wave infrared, and we are adding the additional the uh, lay, uh, uh, profile, vertical profile using the TIR information. Then we driving the partial column concentration. It means that the lower and the uh, upper tropospheric concentration. It's a technique for our uh, uh, processing. Thank you for the presentations. I have very two quick questions. One to the lady from Congo Basin. Uh, you talked of uh, Red Plus Registry, and uh, I heard you talk of jurisdictional Red Plus uh, projects. Are you, uh, have you maybe done some Red Plus nesting? And uh, so that uh, you reduce uh, double counting, maybe if you can speak about that. And then for the gentleman from Mozambique, you did mention that you have a forest info resource information platform. Maybe very quickly, if you can tell us the challenges that you're experiencing in operationalizing the same, and uh, is the platform accessible to the public or there are certain restrictions? Thank you. Um, sorry, could you repeat your question? Sorry, in short. Please, uh, could you repeat the first question? Sorry. Okay. okay, the first question was about red plus nesting, whether you are doing it or, or not. Thank you. Thank you. Can you turn off your mic? Yes, okay. Thank you for your question. It's an interesting question. Uh, we plan to start an, uh, a nested MRV uh, um, study in uh, DRC, maybe f in uh, a couple of months, but we haven't yet started. Thank you. Okay, uh, hello. I'll start from the last question. Uh, regarding the uh, platform, yes, the platform it can be accessed uh, through the link that I presented to you. Uh, if it fails, it won't take more than a uh, half day. It will keep coming. As I mentioned, the internet in Africa, as you know, is an issue. Uh, your first question, actually, you talked about challenge, but I didn't get it properly, the question. Is it challenge on what, please? Challenges that maybe you are experiencing in operationalizing that system. Yes, uh, you know uh, when you want to w uh, provide data uh, to any entity, you have to ensure uh, how accurate is your data, and then you have to be uh, consistent in the methodologies that you you use to feed up uh, your your information uh, center. You see, so what are the challenges here? I try to show you some examples because we do have uh, different platforms. We don't re rely only in our system that we developed like uh, SDRS to detect uh, the deforestation, but we have to compare to the other system in order to see uh, what you get on the ground can be compared to what you have with a different system. But, uh, Due to these uh, differences of the uh, resolutions, this leads us to uh, do a lot of ground truth uh, verifications and validation of information in order to decide what are the most reliable information that I will provide, and you have to keep strict on that kind of uh, information that you're providing because 
This is to feed up the greenhouse gas reporting. So the challenges that we have here uh, to be straightforward are the decisions on what uh, platform that you have to use for this and then for how long because sometimes it change. You know, uh, we've been using uh, Landsat data. Very tough when it comes into uh, using the radar data to compare the information, you know. And then uh, when it comes into the Sentinel, at least we can compare to the radar data. Uh, when it comes, let's say, you're using another platform, you know. So uh, maybe I will just tell you like this. Just try to do a little bit of exercise, comp uh, pick up information from different platforms, and then try to see, you'll see that, okay, when it comes into information, it's a really challenge. And thank you. Well, with this, I would like to thank all the speakers and you as f uh, in the audience for this, uh, from the speakers for the presentations, for you for the interesting uh, questions, uh, questions which are uh, really to the detail of uh, in w uh, on forest monitoring. We saw over the years really an increase of uh, the level of uh, uh, knowledge overall. Uh, we see a lot of south-to-south -south cooperation. The knowledge is much more now in the countries uh, where, uh, where the, uh, the, the knowledge about the forest and uh, uh, possibilities to monitor them is within the countries. And uh, I'm pleased to see this growing dialogue and uh, looking forward to kin continue with you uh, to work further together uh, to share this knowledge even uh, with more people with, uh, within more countries uh, because the experience what we are gaining is very, very valuable. Thanks a lot. So now I'd like to ask uh, uh, Mr. Peter and uh, Nudati for his closing remarks. Thank you. I think we have had uh, such a tremendous session of uh, forests and how satellites really help us in issues to do with the monitoring. I'm not making a presentation, I'm just making a few highlights as, a, as I close the session. And therefore I stand an advantage that uh, I will not have the session of asking uh, the panel asking me questions. Because by the time you want to ask me the question, I'll have closed the session. Uh, the importance of state rights cannot be overemphasized. And I think uh, we have come to a situation where, in terms of monitoring of our forests and our tree cover, we cannot do away with state rights. And uh, I'm so grateful that uh, JAXA and ESA, GFOI, have come in handy to help us in monitoring our forests going back in time, tracking the changes, and making critical decisions.